So this is my fifth video in my instructional series on how to use a Dobsonian telescope. And in this video, I want to talk a bit more about the location you're going to choose to do your astronomy, as well as the conditions that you're going to want to look for. And so first, on location. Obviously, the best location would be in the middle of a desert somewhere that's really still, and there are no lights for miles and miles around. But that's not a luxury that most of us get. And you can actually see a lot just in your own backyard or in your front yard. Now, uh, one thing that I found that's really annoying to me is if there are street lights or house lights that are visible from where I'm sitting with the telescope. So, you know, you want to preserve your night vision and just by having a light shining into your eye, it really affects your night vision so you can't see as well. And then also when you're trying to look through the eyepiece of the telescope, I find that the light really distracts me. So if you can find like a a corner that's surrounded by bushes or I even put up a, a tarp sometimes to block out those lights then it makes it much better for viewing and so now as far as the um, conditions obviously you don't want clouds in the sky or very little clouds in the sky so you can see the stars and beyond that it's really good if you can find a still night because when the atmosphere is moving around it just affects the view that you can see one thing to think about is that a lot of times the stars that you want to see or the objects that you want to see won't be even available for viewing. And the reason for that is that the Earth is constantly changing its orientation to the sky as it's moving around the sun. Oftentimes you have to wait a month or a couple months or even six months to where the object that you want to see is high in the sky. Now even if the object you want to see is in the sky, if it's low in the sky, close to the horizon, you're not going to be able to view it really well. And the reason for that is that you're looking through lots and lots of atmosphere, maybe 100 miles of atmosphere, as opposed to just a few miles of atmosphere when you look straight up. And that's actually the reason that stars twinkle. It's because the atmosphere is moving and it's um, disrupting the light as it's coming towards you. So actually, you can do this experiment. If you go outside and you look at stars that are close to the horizon, you'll see them twinkling. But the ones that are straight above, they won't be twinkling at all. And that's why... For instance, we have the Hubble telescope that we have in orbit around the Earth in space so that there's no atmosphere to, the, to affect the views. So you can see very clear and very far. And another thing to consider is the moon. Now the moon is like a giant lamp, a giant spotlight in the sky. And it can just wash everything else out and it's really hard to see things. And so unless I'm specifically wanting to view the moon, I try to do an astronomy on nights when there is no moon. Now, as I said in an earlier video, oftentimes the moon sets before the evening or it rises late in the evening, so you get a good window of time um, many nights where there's no moon. So I highly recommend that you look for nights that there's no moon. Now, if you do want to view the moon, then when should you view it? Should you view it when it's full or should you view it when it's just a crescent moon, a new moon, or somewhere in between? Actually, the best time to view the moon and to see the most detail is when it's not full. And the reason for that is because as the sun is shining on the moon, if it's only shining on half the moon, then, then the shadows are cast over the craters and you can see much more detail in the craters on the moon. So I think it's good to look at the moon in all phases and you get to see different things and you start to learn what's on the moon and where things are and it can be very interesting. But for most nights you want to go with no moon. Now the next thing to consider is what are you actually going to be seeing? What are you going to look at? And I like to come up with a plan for what I'm going to look at sometimes and so you need to make sure that what you want to look at is going to be in the sky at that time. And you can use a planisphere as I um, showed you earlier to figure out what constellations and what stars are in the sky when you are viewing. And also you can use a program like Stellarium that I showed you earlier on the computer to help you find out what's going to be there. Or there's probably a lot of um, other services on the internet that tell you what's the things that you should be looking for during a certain month. And um, it can be fun because you can have different clusters and different stars and of course the planets come into view at certain times and they're better. So you just have to pick and choose what you want to see based on the time of year that you're looking. And so those are some helpful hints of where to, to set your telescope up and what kind of conditions to look for. And in the next video, we'll actually take some time to learn about how to actually set up your telescope for viewing.